Hello everyone. And in little poll, asking what order hall you guys and girls are most interested in, and the clear winner is the Warlock. This story takes us back to the very start of Legion, where Katgar and the Kid and Thor, they teleport Dalaran to the Broken Isles to take the battle to the Legion, and it's Ritz and Flameskull that shows up to ask for our aid. A moment of your time, Warlock. The Council of the Black Harvest requests your assistance. He speaks on behalf of the Council of the Black Harvest, who are planning to tap into the Twisted Nether and call forth more powerful demonic allies. The Legion invasion, it's made it painfully clear that their only hope is to grow stronger, and while the ritual is ready to go, they're short one member and want us to take the spot. The reason that they have position open, that goes back to Mr. Pandaria and the Warlock Greenfire questline, which, if you haven't done it yet, it, it's quite amazing. It was during this quest that we were actually informed about the Council, who got together after Deathwing's defeat. Six of the greatest Warlocks gathered to learn more advanced forms of magic stolen from our defeated foes and teach all Warlocks advanced forms of magic. Foes like Ragnaros the Fire Lord, his defeat was witnessed by Ritz and Flameskull, or Shinfell Blightsworn, whose blood had been corrupted during the fight with Shogal. There was also Zinn and Smythe, who had witnessed the raw chaos unleashed by Deathwing the Destroyer, and he was present during his defeat and has not spoken a word since. They had all witnessed pieces of even greater power, and it was Kendraval at Ebonlock who suggested the plan of, for example, infusing the molten fury of the Firelands with the unstoppable chaos of Deathwing. Even the powers of the Burning Legion could not hold a candle to their flames. Now the scope of this task, it exceeded the capabilities of any single member of the council, so they decided to split up in teams. Ritzen and Zinnen, they would lead a group into Sulphurus, Shinfell and the gnome Zelefrax, they would hunt down the remaining members of the Twilight's Hammer Cult, while Kendrafad and Jubeka Shadowbreaker, they would return to Outland since it was at that place where Kendrafad had joined the assault upon the Black Temple and he had learned the secrets of Illidan's transformation, secrets that he had shared with the council. There's always more power to gain though, so the council, they split up and they did their thing, but we followed into the steps of Jubeka and Kendrafad. This quest actually had a few hints at Illidan still being out there, which is kinda cool considering that this was during the Mist of Pandaria time periods, but that's besides the point. The questline eventually took us to the top of the Black Temple and into a fierce battle with Kendrafad. He had enveloped himself with so much fell energy that it corrupted him totally and Jubeka was forced to banish him. A small taste of this power was not harmful and it gave our spells a pretty green color and now the council needs us to take up Kendrafad's spot as he, for the moment, is not able to join us. If you mess with sex this here, let us begin. Zelefrax will lead us in the ritual. You have studied the rites, gnome. Yeah, yeah, don't worry about me, hothead. I know what needs to be done. Akris Nomenov. I need everyone to channel on the portal. This ritual requires our unwavering concentration. It is not our concentration that should concern you. Let us hope our newest addition can keep up. What are you waiting for, new blood? Begin! Your power is impressive, warlock. The ritual begins! Here is Talat Yurthognorush. Be prepared. We're reaching deeper into the nether than ever before. Who knows what we may find? Gal Nortales Daval! Keep focused. I sense a being of great power on the other side. Zoranikvar! Um... Telosh! Zolofrax! Uh, or was it Teloth? I'm always mixing those up. No! The portal! Who dares summon me? It is I, Zelefrax Wobbopox! You will serve me, demon! Trifling gnome, I think not! <laughs> Foolish mortals, you think yourselves worthy to enslave the mighty Juggernaut? It is you who will be made to serve!
You gotta love the Jirexus reference here. And the gnome Zelefrux, he's quickly taken out, while the rest of us are taken captive to the Dreadscar Rifts. <clears throat> so, the new blood awakens. You were spared the brunt of the Pit Lord's assault. A pity the rest of us weren't so lucky. We would seem to be Jagannath's prisoners on some forsaken Legion world. Imagine the horrors he has planned for us. Personally, I would prefer to avoid such torment. <clears throat> Pain. Uh, hard to focus. Quickly, before our jailer turns his attention to us, you may be able to control him long enough. I obey. What trickery is this? No one escapes my cells! Uh, Jagannath will... end you! That was Chewbacca. The others might yet live. I am... too wounded to go with you, Warlock. Find the others... together. You might survive this. Leave me! Rittison Flame Skull is no one's burden. Wait! Wait! Please! Please don't hurt Calidus! Calidus is serving to the cruel, cruel Jagannath. He abuses and mocks poor Calidus. Oh, but you... You could be his undoing. Calidus will distract centuries. You find your friends. Here we will meet again soon. Our friendly neighborhood demon Calidus, he transforms into a gnome to distract the guards while we rescue our council members. Chewbacca was nearly food for the hounds. Zinin still doesn't talk, while Shinfell is not really impressed. Is that the best you've got, demon? I thought your kind knew how to torture. Pathetic. Savor your words while your mind can still form them, worm. I appreciate the assistance, Warlock. These demons are dreadfully boring. Wait. Where is Ritson? The orc was gravely injured and cannot follow. No matter. We four should suffice to control that pit lord. That is still our goal, yes. <laughs> Fine, stubborn worgen. Escape shall be our first priority. But if the opportunity to enslave the demon presents itself, I say we take it. Then it's decided. Let's keep moving. <laughs> this way! Over here! What is this miserable creature? Calidus is a friend! He will see. Jagannath hunts powerful weapons. Friend could use these weapons to rule this place. Rule? I like the sound of that. Slow down, Shinfell. How do we know we can trust this thing? You must trust Calidus! Come to the archives! It's not far! I don't know. I've got a bad feeling about this. Amazing! Think of all we could learn from these tomes! Not to mention the power they could give us. <laughs> this is the tome you seek, friend. Take it! Then we can leave this place before Jagannath finds us! Insolent wretches! It would appear we've been discovered. Did you think you could escape my grasp so easily? <sighs> Unhand me, wretch! Haughty warlocks! You presume to issue commands to my kind? Face the consequences for your insolence! 
Shinfell, no! I will smash you like the insignificant gnat you are! Burn! Burn in the fell fire! <sighs> Flee, friend! We must escape through the gateway! Zinnin, look out! Your skull will make a fine trophy! Zinnin! Oh no! <clears throat> Press on, warlock! Close the portal! I will burn you to cinders! The path is clear! Hurry! This is not over, Warlock! I will see the end of you! We lost the council members again, but we did pick up the Tome of Blighted Implements, a powerful tool in the war against the Legion, as it tells us where to pick up our artifacts. We do just that, we go out to pick up our artifacts, and with it in hand, we're ready to return to the Dreadscar and show Jagannath who's the boss. So, the little Warlock returns. You're too late to save your friends. They have the honor of amusing my lord, Mephistroth! He will be pleased to receive yet another gift, and I will happily deliver you to him. Come, warlock! You will be broken! This power you wield, it's not possible! This cannot be! Mephistroth will take you. Oh, Jagannath is slain! Now take his heart! You will be the Lord of the Dreadscar! Bring the heart to the altar! This way! So, mortal, you have slain one of my generals. Savor your victory while you can, Warlock. This war is far from over. We will meet again. <laughs> Friend, the Dread Scar have come to serve at your command. The Dread Scar now belongs to us, including all of his forces, but we have caught the attention of the Dreadlord Mephistroph, who will surely wish to seek revenge for losing his general. We'll need more than just what the Dread Scar has to offer, we need our council back, so it's time to resurrect Ritzen Flameskull. I live! It seems not even a pit lord can keep you down, warlock. But what of the rest of the council? Ritson passes on leadership to us. Since where the council has failed, we have found untold success. We pick our first point of assault to start our adventures on the Broken Isles, make some allies and kick some butt. Until a Black Harvest Acolyte, it tells us that our presence is requested back at the Dreadscar. Calidus is very happy that he no longer suffers under the cruel hand of Jagannoff, and now he has a choice who to follow. He decides to follow us as he pledges his loyalty to the new Overlord. Friend won't need to face the Legion alone. Ritson is also quite impressed, and he's familiar with the burden of leadership. A rebuild in the council is our key to defeating the Legion, but it's a task that cannot be completed alone, so he will be honored to serve as second. I will not rest until the council has been rebuilt. Our first two champions are of great use, as they can be sent out to complete vital assignments across the Broken Isles. Their first mission is to gather information at any cost, find out where our missing council members are being held. They fight with Rift Weaver Divas, who does offer some information, but considering how we obtained it, it might not be that reliable. To aid our champions in the future, we have the beautiful, sexy Imp Mother Diala, who is adept at summoning imps, and will gladly offer them to the cause. These extra forces allow us to free a prisoner being held captive, so we send them out to fight Valatos, and our troops come back with Archivus Melinda, who's somewhat of an anomaly, as apparently not many from a dwarven race choose to follow our path. 
What makes her even more unique is that her meticulous study of her craft, her knowledge will be unsurpassed and she offers us the option to improve the Order Hall. With all that going, it's time to dive into the Black Harvest archives, which contains magical knowledge collected from various sources over time. It's reasonable to think that somewhere among these countless scrolls, we'll find something to aid us in our mission to rescue the remaining council members. Our troops are sent in to do our research and they come back with a tome that details the process of creating a demonic gateway. It has the power to access any demon world, assuming we know where to direct it. Such a gateway, it could be used to locate and retrieve the remaining council members, but in order to channel it, we'll need the assistance of someone with intimate knowledge of the Burning Legion. Ritsin knows just the warlock for the job, namely Kira Ayersol, but we should be the ones to ask her, since she and Ritsin, they have quite a history. I was wondering if this was a story that I missed out on, something from the past, but it seems like this story's been set up mainly for the Legion expansion. At one point, Ritsin was Kira's mentor, and she followed him blindly, trusting that he would look out for her best interest, but instead, he left her to lead the Council of the Black Harvest, a council that believed that her way of doing things was wrong. She'd also pretended to be a member of the Argus Wake, an organization connected to the Shadow Council, which allied itself with the Syndicate in Altrek, and they had the goal of ruling Altrek and prepare the way for the third host, to have the Legion Lords reign fire from the skies once again. If you remember the Scepter of Sagaris artifact questline, we had Nagus during that quest, and he was also a member of the Argus Wake. Now her time with the Arcus Wake is probably why she has knowledge of the Bloodstones, since they were known for using them, and since she mentioned that she pretended to be a member, it's only reasonable to assume that she was working against the organization from within. Apparently, there came a point where she really needed her mentor, but he turned her back on her, and that's why she's not really keen on helping Ritson. We might have better luck though, so we find her at the Greenway in Azuna, but her help doesn't come for free. Her currency is power and knowledge, meaning that we'll have to help her out first before she helps us. First, we're sent out to collect a bloodstone that was stolen from her by the Naga. Now these stones, they contain a great deal of power that can only be awakened once they're fed, so we let the stone feed on the blood of demons at the fell place ingress. With the stone satisfied, it's time for a little test. Kira has never witnessed the direct effects of a bloodstone upon a demon. In theory, its power could be used to bend the will of demons that would otherwise not so easily be controlled. In the cave, she has some imps imprisoned, which make for a great test subject for the stone, but instead of controlling them, the subject simply dies. This is an unexpected result, so more research will be needed, but for now, we've held up our end of the bargain, and Kira is ready to repay us for the hard work. Your power has grown, Kira. It has, indeed. And you should keep that in mind the next time you attempt to speak to me. We take the gateway into the demonic world known as Nishkara, a planet that several other classes also visit for either the artifacts or the Order Hall campaigns. And here it is, where we can rescue Zinin and Chewbacca, but Shin fell, she herself is nowhere to be found. Mistress is gone. The Dreadlord came for her. Golab tried to help. Golan failed. It was quite easy to save two of her missing members, who gladly offered their service to the council. But of course, Zinnin, he still doesn't say anything. Together we will destroy the Burning Legion! Shinfo is in the hands of Mephistroph, and this is a big problem. If they're able to break her, they gain the power and knowledge to mount a devastating attack against our Dreadscar Rifts. A ritual summoning should be able to summon Shinfo to our side, but we'll need to create a powerful anchor to make that work. This means more missions for our champions to go on, and as some extra backup, we now have recruited Jared, who selects only the finest candidates, those that possess the skills that we desire, to become our new Acolytes. They're sent out to collect empowered soul shards from our defeated enemies, which should be powerful enough to craft the Anchor. They fight the Blackrock Assassins at Bredensbrook, the Nightmare Imps at the Moonclaw Vale, the Rodents within Dalaran, the Harpies within High Mountain, and the Poachers that are threatening the wildlife in High Mountain. While they go about doing that, we're sent into the Blackrock Hold to fight with the Amalgam of Souls, since besides the empowered soul shards, we'll also need to link something of Shinfels to an unclaimed soul. The soul will act like a beacon, guiding Shinfel through the Twisted Nether and back to the Dreadscar Rift. Now we have the staff that should provide us with the link that we need, and the unclaimed soul is taken from the Amalgam. As it goes with these summoning rituals, it will require three warlocks to complete, and Kira is kind enough to assist. Will you assist us, Kira? I'll help, of course. Unlike you, I do not abandon a fellow warlock when they might need me most. Our powers combined, they are able to drag Shinfell through the Twisted Nether and back into the Dreadscar Rift. But the warlock, she doesn't look too good. 
Her mind remains in the hands of her demon captors, who've placed some sort of ancient curse upon her. Ritson has never seen anything like it, and I believe that this is a nudge at the warlock spell called Curse of Doom, which used to summon a Doom Guard once it expired, and that has been name changed from Curse of Doom into Bane of Doom, until these days it's just called Doom, which is why Ritson doesn't recognize it. We need to figure out what kind of magic we're dealing with, and there is an alchemist who's earned himself quite a reputation for his unconventional methods. Shunned from Gilneas long ago, it's Mad Ernie who's taken up residence in Bradensbrook within Valshera, but he hasn't gone by that name in years. He is now known as Ernest Carlyle, favoring the calm life with the farm and Granny Marl. He's not the man that he used to be, but he's also not against helping us if we help him out first, mainly with rounding up his goats that had dashed out when the fighting started. With his beloved animals back in their pen, Ernie tells us that doom curses they're very serious business, so much so that many warlocks didn't deal with them for some time. The magic, it grows stronger as time goes on, eventually leading to death, and only the caster of the curse can remove it. He is able to craft an elixir, after us getting the ingredients, it will slow its progression, but this will only weaken the curse and not cure it. What now? This had better amuse me. Those cursed twins. They will pay for what they did. Lady Sacralash and her sister Alathes. They are responsible for this foul magic that infects my blood. The twins are helping Mephistroth build an army. They intend to attack Dreadscar and steal the Fell Blood Altar. The Eredar twins, the same twins that we fought during the Sunwell Plateau raid way back when during the Burning Crusades, they are the ones who got their hands on Shinfell and they've placed this terrible curse upon her. Now killing a demon, it isn't always the answer. Sometimes the solution is to control a demon, or in this case two of them. If we can summon the sisters and bend their will to ours, it will deliver a devastating blow to Mephisto's forces and rid Shinfell of her curse, not to mention that we get the freaking Eredar twins under our control. Very we well. We can use the Bloodstone. It will be powerful enough to control the sisters when they're in a weakened state. Before we take the twins on, some planning is required, and to assist our troops, Shinfo and Kira, they offer their allegiance and they become our champions. I will do whatever is needed to defend Dreadscar Rift from the Burning Legion. You need something? You did right by your fellow warlocks, which is commendable and surprising. I know some who would choose the pursuit of power over the needs of others. It was never a choice, Kira. We have the Bloodstone, and Kira has made considerable progress with it, so hopefully this time it will actually control the demons and not just instantly kill them. To use it, we'll first have to feed it some delicious demon blood, and lucky for us, there's no shortage of demons to kill. Blood is its power, but the ability to actually control a demon, that comes from consuming a corrupted heart. The more powerful, the better. It is within the vaults of the Warden that we find just the heart that we need, beating in the chest of the traitor Cordana, and just as a side note, poor, poor Cordana. She is part of so many quests that take stuff away from her, like I remember the one for the Death Knights where they actually collect their eye. It's like she's an organ market by this point, but whatever, we need his Felsworn heart, so we go out and we collect it. Summoning the sisters will not be an easy task, and considering what happened the last time that we tried to summon a powerful demon, we need someone who won't mess it up. The Broken Isles are swarming with new blood, all hoping to make a name for themselves in the chaos that followed, so we send our champions out to investigate who's worthy within the different zones of the Broken Isles. One warlock stands out above the rest, a most unusual choice, a name that most of you are familiar with, it's Fizzlebang. But it's not Wilfred Fizzlebang, the one that messed up the summoning of Jerexus, it's actually his sister Lulabelle, who's made her way to Stormheim. If she has half his power but twice his intelligence, then we might just succeed in summoning the Eredar twins, so we go out to recruit her, but Lunabelle is already on a quest of her own. Yeah, what do you want? Thanks to the legacy of her family name, any time that some miserable warlock summons demons that they can't control, she is the one that gets the blame. A nearby cave is the scene of her latest crime, where unruly imps and other nasty demons are now roaming free. We need to banish the demons that are running amok, we need to clean up the mess, we'll also find the lousy warlock who's responsible for this and get him to sign a written confession of his wrongdoings. The known warlock, Gallius Meyermore, he is of course completely innocent. Like he told the guards in Dalaran, it's, it's probably the Fizzlebang girl that's responsible, just like her brother, always summoning a mess of demons that she can't control. Confess your crimes, Gallius. Crimes? The only thing I am guilty of is being the most powerful warlock in all of Azeroth! Come, minions! Aid me in battle against this accuser! Stop! Please! I'll pet a confession! Assuming you didn't break my writing hand. 
The writing is a little bit difficult to decipher. But armed with the confession, Lunabel should be able to prove her innocence and focus on more pressing matters like helping us and becoming our next champion. You can count me among those that are willing to fight the Burning Legion at your side. With the hard empowered and our latest recruits, we're ready to summon the sisters, weaken them and put them under our control. We'll conduct the summoning on the outskirts of the Dreadscar Rift. If things don't go as planned, then at least the aftermath of the mess that will be contained on the small piece of land floating above our order. Are we done? Council members and allies, it is time to begin the summoning. Foolish warlocks, summoning what you cannot control. You will meet your death by our hands. The Eredar twins are not so easy defeated. It once took a whole raid team to take them down. Their fire and shadow magic, it does some serious damage. But our council has also grown strong. Our artifact weapon is empowered and the twins are subdued. Use the bloodstone! You've done it. The sisters are yours to control. Sacralash and Alethys will prove to be powerful tools for our order. Let us meet back at the Council's circle. There is much to discuss. With the Demon Sisters now under our control, we've managed to weaken Mephisto's army and we gain powerful allies for the Council. Our work is not done, however. Dreadscar Rift, it will remain a target as long as the Burning Legion remains. If we wish to protect our new home, we must rebuild the Council and fill up the last spot still remaining. This is where we actually get a choice of either adding Lulubel or Kira, and I personally, I couldn't make any other choice than to let the fizzle bang that doesn't mess up into our ranks. The Fellfire beckons. Let us gather and give our own. Our leader has done what no other could do. The Council of the Black Harvest lives once again. Under the first, our power will reach new heights. The secrets of the Burning Legion will be ours to unlock. As our last champions, we gain none other than the Eredar twins, who now live to serve our will, and it pleased them to do our bidding. Our will is yours to command. And then finally, there's Ritzen, who informs his netherlord that the research into the Felblood Altar it has proven useful, and they developed a ritual that should unleash the full potential of our artifacts. If you mess we with- We of the Black Harvest have been admiring your skill, netherlord. To master a weapon of such considerable power is truly inspiring. Through the demons you've subjugated and the resources you've obtained, we have the means to perform a ritual that will awaken your artifact's dark destiny. Raise your weapon before the fell blood altar. Watch as its dread energies infuse your weapon with infernal might. Yes! Such wicked glory awaits you! With this weapon, you will bind the Legion to our will! Even Kill Jaden will cower like a craven dog! Let's hope so, Ritzen. And with that, we've reached the end of the Warlock Order Hall campaign. From being taken captive to turning the Dreadscar Rift under our control, empowering our artifacts and reforming the Council of the Black Harvest with us leading the way. Who knows how the storyline with Mephistroph and the Warlock Order Hall is going to end. But for now, this is the end of the story. As always, thank you so very much for watching everyone. Subscribe if you like my videos, leave a like if you enjoyed this one, and until next time guys, see ya!